my pottery peeps. So I'm going to show you. Um, I'm actually filming both these videos on the same day. So while my mountains are drying and stiffening up, I'm taking advantage of being in the studio and my knees haven't given out yet of um, doing something else. I have been playing with um, the new GR pottery forms. Let me grab them. I have, <laughs> I think I have everything Jeff has made because I've been doing GR pottery forms. Oh God, since he first started doing them. Anyway, these are the Watu system and his new um, more rounded plates, which I actually love Jeff. I hope you are doing more stuff with this in the future because I will be buying more. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things that I've been doing, I talked a lot about having your pottery um, pretty much finished when it comes off the wheel um, or decorated. So I've been doing, this is actually done, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. With the smaller of the plates, don't remember what size this is. Um, I'm going to read this. It is a nine inch plate, thereabouts. And by doing it this way, I am able to make a pretty good size pasta bowl or fruit bowl or anyway, super pretty. But I'm going to show you a version of this. Let me set that over there. It's actually ready to go in the bisque. So I attempted to do this. And I'm going to attempt to do something similar to this. And this is using a stencil. And I made a lot of mistakes. First time I've ever done it. In my head it worked, but didn't work in practice, mainly because I wasn't patient enough. I didn't let the underglaze that I washed on first dry enough before I put the stencil on. And so we're going to try it a little different on this one and see if we have more success. I'm going to set these guys out of the way so nothing gets splashed on them. So I've already rolled out a slab here um, and it's three eighths. It's a hair above three eighths of one tick. I'm sure <laughs> my husband makes fun of me all the time because I don't do math. And anytime we're building something or whatever, it's three eighths plus a tick or three eighths minus a tick. <laughs> I don't know those sixteenths, and um, no matter how, he's even gotten me a tape measure, he did buy me a tape measure that names every single one of those stupid little ticks, and that makes it easier, but I cannot um, keep it in my head what those ticks are. Anyway, so a little bit above three eighths, and I've um, smoothed it out. I wonder if, I think I'm getting too many shadows. And let me grab my sponge here. I got something in my clay. I moved all my underglazes. I'm using underglazes. I'm using um, the Mako fun Fundamentals and also the um, Amico Velvets. I'm using both of those. That's what I'm using today. All right, that might work. Gets you a little crooked, but you know, hey, we're all a little crooked, aren't we? <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do with this, which you're not going to see. Actually, I'll do it this way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and like these lovely grooves. And using them on this Artista is amazing. So I'm going to pick up my slab and just drape it over the form. And I'm just going to, I want to make sure that it's actually on all the edges. And if it's not, actually, let me get this big part cut off. I need to scooch it just a tad. Okay. Make sure when you're putting these on, sometimes it's good to lift it up and roll it back like that. Um, so you don't get any air bubbles. And I'm just going to take my knife and go all the way around using the WA system board as my guide. I will be cleaning this up. Okay. So I will bring in my rib, make sure it's cleaned. And this is just the red. 
Is it dirty girls or mud tools? Hold on, let me see. It's just the red one. And it's mud tools. Okay. So I'm just gonna use this and then I'm just gonna go over the plate and just compress that down. Just make sure I got a smooth surface to do to start with. Okay. Now I'm going to cut this again. Make sure I have a centered, perfectly centered plate. You can use this strip for a foot, but I will show you my favorite way of doing a foot. And when we get to the foot part. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Forgot my stencil. So I got this stencil off of Amazon. I love anything to do with um, the wilderness. Um, trees, nature, animals, that's my jam. So in this, when I saw this stencil, I had to, I had to get it because it's right up my alley. So here's one. This is a 12 by 12 stencil, so it's, it's fairly big. So we're hoping that my idea is gonna work. All right, so I am going to, I'm gonna compress this rim and round it off. I don't like a sharp rim as you heard me talk. Plus, I think by rounding it off like this, makes it look like it's wheel thrown. I mean, it's hard for um, someone who's not doing pottery to know what you did and how you did it. Actually, even though I smoothed that off, I want this fairly dry. So I'm gonna come in and take that off. If I wanted it even smoother, whoops. If you do this, make sure you're coming into the middle with that edge up so you don't gouge in the middle. You can always just take your finger, hit it right there in the middle. Your fingers are really your best tools and smooth that down. All right, I still have some lines on there. So I'm gonna go ahead with the metal rib and just take those off. I want a really smooth surface for what I'm gonna try and do. All right. I like both of these, but I bought it for this one. Ah, isn't that just awesome? So I don't think there's a front or a back, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this on here I need to make sure that it is as centered as I can make it before I set it down. And I didn't do it. <laughs> Woo, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, okay. So if you do that, in fact, I'm wondering, I'm gonna try something else. That was probably a happy accident. Got me thinking of something else. Since this clay is super wet, just came out of the bag, I have my cornstarch and a little salt shaker. I am going to just kind of lightly dust that. And then we will try this again. So the hardest part, I think, is going to be getting this on here centered. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm actually gonna make this textured. So I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna slowly roll 
the stencil in. I do believe Sharon Hoppy shows some of this type of a technique. Sharon Hoppy Designs. And I've seen this technique done before. Um, <laughs> I am not, there is nothing original out there. It's just, it's all been done before. <laughs> In fact, I've had a lot of people ask me, you're putting all your ideas out there into the universe for people to make and, and uh, make money off of um, stuff that you come up with. And it's like, you know, like I said, there's no new ideas. It's all been done. And you can do something exactly the way I did it, and you will have something that has a different result because it's got your hands on it. So I don't go into, yeah, any ideas you see on my YouTube channel, feel free to make them your own because, like I said, it's all been done before. <laughs> And, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I've been lucky enough to be around so many potters that, um, share. I think potters share more than any other community, mainly because once you put your hands on something and you change it up, it's yours. All right, so I'm going to go for an ombre effect. I've got green, I've got blue, I've got purple, some of my favorite colors. And I even have, where's my, I've got this pear green that I really, really like and I'm almost out of. So we'll see if we can actually do what I want to do with this. I also have some white on my tray and I am going to be mixing a little bit of my purple and blue since the Amico Velvets, um, Amethyst and Royal Blue are so heavily pigmented. I don't know if I want it that dark. So I get my brush wet first. I'm actually going to take some of this purple out and mix it in my white because I'm going to do a variegated um, color thing. So I've got purple with white on my brush and I'm just going to start and I'm just going to Paint these. I need to, um, I've ordered them because while I've been down recovering, I seriously have spent so much money ordering things for the, the studio. <laughs> Stuff I haven't even played with yet. Stuff I got for um, Christmas I haven't even played with yet. And let's actually take that down a little fuller, further. Um, I'm a huge tie-dyed tie girl, as you've been watching a lot of my shirts are tie-dyed. I'm just a hippie. And I love colors blending into each other and um, making a variegated look. So that was the amethyst with the white. Um, so the color was... Um, lighter. So then I'm going to take the darker amethyst straight and blend that in. And if it gets streaky, I don't mind. I think it's actually cool if it's streaky. So and I'll go back into the amethyst with the white. Do not change my brush. Now I'm going to go into the blue. Actually, I'm going to wash my brush out for this. I'm going to take some of that blue and add it to the white, too. So, I've got a <laughs> messy palette, which is par for the course for me. And then I'm going to bring in that blue that's mixed in with the white. And I'm just doing it, you know, what looks good for me, what I like. Okay. And I'm going to blend that up into the purple. Okay. 
And I might have to let this dry and then maybe add more color. And if you mess it up, um, it's okay because um, you're going to, this is on greenware. So if you don't like it, when you get to the bis stage, you can do something totally different or you can fix it there. Okay, so now I've added the green on my blue paintbrush. So I'm going to mix that in. The green is actually a little bit wetter and bring it down. I actually kind of like the texture that the my pony roller gave it. All right, so I could take that off now, but I'm afraid that if I do, I will really mess it up. I think maybe I want to take that green up a bit. That's pretty. All right, I'm gonna let it dry. And um, come back to it in a bit. Oh, okay, potter's tip. I've done this before where you're not patient and I wanted it to dry and I got my heat gun out and I hit a stencil with the heat gun. Do not do that. <laughs> it will melt your stencil. Even if you're really careful, it'll still melt your stencil. And um, so that happened to me with one of uh, Sharon Hoppy's stencils that I used. So take it from me. Don't do that. All right, this is dried um, a bit. Still really wet. You can still see the moisture. But I'm going to attempt... I don't know which direction is going to be best. But I'm going to... And it's, dang it, it's stuck to the, I didn't put enough cornstarch on it. So when I rolled it in, it stuck to the stencil a lot. So this might not work. We might have to try this again. So we'll have to, yeah, I don't like how badly it's stuck. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about in a minute. It's going to put a really interesting texture on this. It's almost like I need to... Wow. Okay, so this actually tore the clay in places. So I need to play with this a little bit more because it has lots of potential, but obviously I needed to put a lot more cornstarch on this. But I do kind of like the texture. Texture is kind of cool. Looks like a moonscape. I can still save it by coming in here and smoothing it all down. Somewhat. We'll see if I want to. <laughs> it's almost like I need a reverse stencil. Hmm. It's kind of cool though. So I'm going to play with it and see if I can actually save this or not. And if you try this, I'm going to try it again because I'm still trying this, this version of <laughs> decorating. Um, I'm going to get a slab and let it really dry out and see if that helps or not really dry out but get it's a fine line I need to be able to form it into a plate and so it can't be 
too leather hard, otherwise I'm not going to be able to form it, but it definitely has to be more leather hard than this was. Hmm. You know what? I don't mind the texture that much around the the line or the horns of the elk. So if I just smooth the outside of that, and then when I um, make the plate, these will definitely be pushed down. So I think I'm going to. Not worry about it so much and just see what we end up with. So that's what I'm going to do. But I am going to let it dry a little bit more before I do anything else. And I'll take this in and wash it. Before I go in, I just saw my saran wrap. So I wonder if I put this over the design The wrinkles out. Then I can come in. That'll work. Woohoo! As long as the paint doesn't stick to the saran wrap. So I come in here and do this. Okay, that's gonna do it. That'll work. I don't mind some of the texture, so I think I'm gonna leave some of it. It'll probably smooth out even more. I just don't want to ruin the stencil that we painted. I'm gonna lift this up though, because I want that underglaze to dry more. Now that I know that'll work, I'll come back to it in a bit. I let this stiffen up, and um, I hope it's not stiffened up too much, but this is actually working really well, putting the saran wrap over it and smoothing out the rough spots that the stencil made because I didn't wait until it was soft leather hard, I would say. I wouldn't, I'm still hoping to be able to form this into a plate. So, all right, let's see if I got the majority of those off. And we'll see what we got. All right, it's not too bad. I can work with that. All right, like I said, <laughs> pottery is a lot of problem solving. So, I wanna... It'd be cool to actually use these stencils um, as a template to carve too. Um, I wonder, kind of like the idea of doing a, a tree border. So I'm going to do that too. <laughs> Just give it a little bit more visual decoration. Tell you, I'm really enjoying having this wheel up on my table. <laughs> I need the table space, but this is actually kind of nice. I 
You can see my sister who just got her kitchen redone go nuts over this. Don't want trees on that little birdie, so I'm gonna kind of tilt this. I tilted that stamp up just on its end a little bit so I wouldn't press into the bird. push it in to kind of beef up the edge just a bit. I don't want to destroy that texture though. All right, that looks like it, it worked out okay. Now, do these plates, let me grab one here. I think I'm going to be Actually, let me get the clean one. Let's get a new one. <laughs> Those ones all have got stuff on them, and I don't... I'm going to be smart here and cover my design with some saran wrap. Plastic wrap, or... Organize my drawers, they don't want to shut. Okay. You definitely want to make sure there's no folding because even though the plastic wrap is really thin, it will lead lines that. I most likely will have to rub out. So I don't want to add to it and have have corners up or anything. So I'm just looking to cover up the underglaze just so that when I do the form it doesn't stick. I know I can do um, cornstarch too, but obviously the cornstarch didn't work out as well as I thought it would um, when I did the underglaze painting or with the stencil. And so I'm going to give this a try. Okay. Now I'm going to add this one and try and get it into the center. There we go. And then here's the little keeping for the WA system. I'm going to pick them both up, flip them, and find my groove. Put that on my wheel. And then there. Now I want to, actually, I'm going to grab the saran wrap. No, I'm not going to grab the saran wrap. I got to grab the clay. So I'm just taking my fingers underneath here and encouraging that clay to fall down all the way around and then take that off okay so my clay is stiffened up 
quite a bit. Um, I don't want to thin the clay, so I am going to be pulling the clay up to the form. All the way around. And then I'm going to compress it. And then I'm going to show you how I do my feet. Now I'm using the smaller form, but I want this to be more of a possible. So that's why I did the smaller form instead of the bigger one. off to find the um, edge of these forms because it's a little bit more difficult and go to um, go watch Jeff on GR pottery forms um, on Instagram or um, YouTube and he explains this really well too so to find the center, I need about three inches. I already know that this is six inches across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find that center and then just mark myself a line. And then I will score a line. Now one thing I do different for my feet is I actually will extrude a coil. You can cut the feet with um, this guy, the corn cob thingy, and those work great too, but I have found that I like a more, I guess, elegant foot on my plates. So I have developed doing it this way. And my students are now doing it this way. So I've got this die, just a coil, in my extruder. Sorry, didn't mean that to be so loud. And then I'm just going to extrude a coil. And it's probably gonna be off camera because I got you set up pretty close. So I'm just pushing out a coil. Always push out more than I need. So this is the coil. And then what I'm gonna do is I will score one side of my coil. I'll grab a brush here. And I'm going to just add some water to both. Okay. I'll bring my coil over and I'll set it right down there on that line with, that I know is centered <laughs> and scored. I cut them at a diagonal. Score the ends. And then I'm going to push those together and smooth them really well. Okay, then I'm going to go around and I'm going to start at one spot and I'm going to, I take my fingers like this and I kind of pinch it, pinch it and I push it, pinch and push. Okay, and go all the way around, pinching and pushing that clay coil down. And I will kind of divide it up so that, because when you do this, it kind of stretches it a little bit, but if you get it 
down in a few areas, it, it'll be fine. So I've got that all pinched and pushed down. I'm gonna wet my sponge, turn on my wheel, and I'm pretty much going to um, push this down even more. Hold my hand, and I got my fingers, my thumb and finger like this. So I kind of get this V shape. And I'll bring in my handy dandy little finger tool. Make sure that's all connected there on both sides. And just like that, you've got yourself a really nice, elegant foot. And if you have, if you end up with too much clay, this foot actually turned out pretty dang perfect. But I'll show you what, how a lot of mine, if I push them up too far, or if I've got extra clay and it's a wavy rim, I will just cut off the very top with the needle tool. Take that off and then round it off. But it's a really elegant foot that you know is not going to crack. Just like that. So now, <laughs> the fun part, where I get to try and get it off of here. I'm gonna create myself a little bit of space. I'm gonna bring my board back. I'm gonna twist you a little bit so you can see what I'm doing too. I'm gonna grab some spacers. And I'm just gonna put some spacers under here. This'll work. So I brought myself out a drink. So if you pick this up, this will also work with a bottle. <laughs> Jeff just showed this on ClayshareCon, brilliant. Okay, so right now, I'm gonna leave it on there, pull this down, and let me pull you back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna flute this because I really liked the fluting, and the fluting is just taking your fingers like this, or make a scallop edge, okay? And I gotta be careful that I've got that texture there and I don't wanna mess that up. But while it's sitting up here hanging out, I can carefully just give this, kinda of like you do a pie. My finger on the inside, I am only hitting it right here, not all the way along my finger, because I don't want to disturb that tree design that I put in there. So I'm just hitting it on the edge. You can go back again one more time and kind of just push that up even just a little bit more. This also helps like if you have problems with your plates or your bowls warping, I have found that if you flute or scallop the edge kind of takes care of that for you. It's 
something about the tension of the clay going two different directions. I'm sure there's physics behind it, but <laughs> I'm a clay person, not a physics person. Okay, so now I've got this. And I can bring, I don't want that plastic folding down on me. It's not a big deal if it does. I mean, I can fix it later. But so I'm going to lift it up off of the key and then carefully set it down on top of my forms. And the reason why I want it, let me just set this down so I've got a tabletop here. The reason why I want it up is I'm going to push those walls down now and it will create a really large pasta ball. So, just going to slowly encourage the clay to do follow gravity and touch the bat. And this you just have to just keep slowly doing until all, all of it is touching the bat. Just encourage it to gently fall down. And touch it and then I will leave this on here until it's um, basically leather hard and um, take it off then it does take a little while to just gently encourage that to fall and stay <laughs> it doesn't want to stay because if it was wet it'd stay and I've done this wet when I didn't do any decoration, but I really love the idea of decorating in this stage. This is my favorite stage of the clay. I love the greenware. And so I'll play with it. <laughs> and I'll, I don't have any problem. I like to decorate the greenware to where when it comes to decorating um, the bisque and having to glaze and that stuff. No, I don't really like doing that. So I will come in sometimes, well, I am, especially in this one, and kind of make a groove on the back side here in between those scallops just to give them some more definition and also to help them hold their shape. And if I have any marks from fingernails or whatever, I can get them in, get them out now. And then we'll let this set up and when, I'll show you what it looks like when I, um, when it is ready to be released. Okay, kind of cool, right? Okay, so the plate has set, whoops, don't do that. <laughs> so the plate has been setting up for um, a few hours and I am going to, we're gonna see what we get. I'm gonna go ahead and tip it over for you. Let me go ahead and, so you can see. Let me grab another board here. Let's see, where's my boards? And then I'm just gonna flip it again and see what we get. I found that I can tip that out with a tool and we'll take this off. All right, doesn't look too, too bad. So hopefully, yeah, it's still a little bit 
little bit um, soft, so I'm not going to pick it up. We're just going to let it dry out like this. And the last one I did, I didn't even weight it down. So I think with the addition of fluting or scalloping the edges of the bowl, it gives it some strength because it's fighting both directions to go, so it doesn't um, warp. At least that's my theory. So <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Um, and then I'm just going to give it... I probably will do a green celadon on the edge and then probably a clear on the inside. We'll see how it fires. And uh, this is all an experiment as everything in pottery is. So um, hope you like this and um, show me pictures if you give it a try. Love to see what you guys come up with too. All right, we'll see you in the next one.